cool. Right, sorry about that. Uh, that's all my fault for trying to be flash and use Google Drive instead of PowerPoint. And I've learned a valuable lesson today and won't ever repeat that again. But thank you for waiting while we sorted that out. And thank you all um, for coming along tonight as well. Can Before I get started, can we do just one minute of audience participation, if that's all right. And uh, I apologize in advance for this if you're the sort of person that hates it, because I also am. Who is looking for a job right now? And if you keep your hand up, if you've never worked in digital before. Cool, so we've got a few few new people and some people that are changing, changing from what they're doing. That's cool, because it'll just help me later on when we get into the uh, serious advice section. We can tailor it a little bit more for that. So anyway, so um, my name's John. I'm the Client Services Director at a digital agency called Graphite. We're based right on this. Right on the seafront? Nearer is better, apparently. Um, yeah, right on the seafront, just where the zip wire thing is. Um, and we have uh, been going for about seven or eight years now, I think. Um, I'm relatively new to the business, been there for just over two years. Um, and my, uh, my kind of remit is to look after all of the clients and the people that look after the clients. So that's uh, kind of where we start. And why am I here today? To tell you a little bit about that and how I ended up there. So. As I said, Client Services Director at Graphite, bit of a weird job title, it means I look after all the money and the people that look after money, um, keep the clients happy and make sure we make a profit. Um, no one really understands what that is. Um, my girlfriend just tells people I work in IT, doesn't annoy me at all, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned it today. Um, but uh, essentially what we do um, as in a digital agency is help clients turn their ideas that they might have um, to do digital things into reality. So often they don't have the skills or experience to do that in-house. Um, so we make uh, apps, websites, games, all kinds of different stuff for various different businesses. I've been lucky to work with tons of different cool clients um, over the last few years. Um, not all of these are graphite, some of them are from my previous uh, employment. Um, some unlikely ones in there. Rimmel, actually one of my best ever clients. I spent four and a half years selling makeup. It was uh, good, interesting. Um, I'm now a really bad foundation snob. If I see people with the wrong shade of foundation, I'm, uh, I can't resist. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of these different brands in all different capacities. So um, we made a game for Domino's, which was part of a quite a cool social activation that went out with a terrible YouTuber called Mess Yourself. I don't know if you please don't watch it. It's really bad. He's really annoying, but the game was really cool. Um, did some kind of digital branding stuff at Barclay Group, did um, ZSL, massive website for them, for London Zoo, and the app that um, guides you around the, around the zoo when you go. Lots of things. Sadly, won't be working with Shazam anymore because of Apple. They bought them and closed them. Very upsetting. Um, they were a very cool client. And the One Direction mention on there, I'm morally opposed to One Direction, but we did their fragrance website for them when they launched their fragrance, which is uh, a fragrance for ladies so that they could smell how One Direction would want you to smell. Uh, it's not good. It smells like a 12-year-old girl's bedroom if you dipped it in a sweet shop. But um, interesting project nonetheless. It's an example of something at scale. It, uh, we almost broke our caching solution on that because so many people were sat there refreshing it. Don't do that. Uh, refreshing it, trying to get the, get the fragrance. So. Yeah, basically, the point of this slide is to say, I've done a lot of stuff, um, not all of it good, but some of it interesting. Um, and it all started back in the dim and distant past of 2004, while I was at university, um, started working at uh, what politely, I think at the time we were calling a micro agency, but it's basically one dude who was a chartered marketeer, and he was mental. Um, and he basically hired me um, to help him kind of sell his services and sell himself. But it was an amazing playground. I got the chance to basically help loads of really small businesses that had cool and interesting engineering products, turn them into something that they could actually sell to people. Um, and I got to try everything. So I did some client services stuff, did some development, and we built some online stores, um, very early days of e-commerce. Everything was done by hand, did loads of design. So basically a, an interesting playground. Um, that's not even their real logo. They don't exist anymore, so I couldn't find it anywhere, sadly. Um, and then moved down and started working in Surrey at a place called Bradley Dyer. Um, it was like 50 odd people as a full service agency, not digital specialist. I don't necessarily recommend that as a life choice. Very stressful explaining to senior account directors that have been doing it for 20 years why you can't sell a website tomorrow for 2,000 pounds and expect it to be good. Um, so yeah, probably not a good uh, not a good move there. But again, it was an interesting playground for me. Um, I'm 
did a talk about this before for Wired Sussex about how that came about. But I basically came to work one day, I was an account manager, and the um, head of digital had just left, just disappeared to this day. We don't know where he went. Um, and so a couple of weeks later, they decided that they'd just put me in charge of the asylum. Um, and so I had a team of like 12 or 14 devs, 3D designers, graphic designers, who were all a lot older than me and not at all interested in working with me or for me. So that was a, an interesting experience, uh, one that I hope not to repeat again. Um, but after doing that for a little while, I ended up at a pretty cool agency in London called Catch. Um, and that's where the bulk of the logos are on the left hand side of that um, interesting uh, logo wall came from. Um, working there as head of project. So gradually uh, starting to specialize a little bit and really focusing in on the client services side of things and, and working really closely with designers and developers to make some cool and interesting stuff. And then finally, uh, at Graphite now and since 2016, uh, client services director there. So as I said, looking after all the money stuff. Um, so yeah, 14 years working in digital. I've hired over 150 people and I must have read thousands of CVs from people uh, at all levels of experience. So um, although I may not be a designer or developer right now, I have read many, many of their CVs, interviewed just as many, um, and hired lots of them as well, and seen them go on to do really good things as well. So I feel reasonably qualified to try and give you a little bit of advice today, and hopefully you will agree this will be a worthwhile use of your 10 minutes. I've seen some bad stuff um, <laughs> during that time, as well as some really good stuff some crazy applications, people not putting any effort in, people turning up to interviews completely unprepared. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about what the good things that you can do are. Um, but if, uh, if you want to speak to me afterwards about all the things you definitely shouldn't do, I've got a really long list uh, that we can go through. Um, and now a stat that I stole from my boss. Um, Brighton is a great place to work. Um, one of the UK's top digital clusters, a lot of money. Uh, employing a lot of people and basically demand is there. So 1.2 million more technical people needed in the UK by 2022. If you're thinking about a career in digital and you haven't yet decided, it, this is a really good time. Um, hopefully Brexit isn't going to hit us too hard. If there was some wood here, everything will be fine. Um, but yeah, we're, it's, it's a really good time to join. We're at a point where technology is becoming less of a struggle and it's able actually to enable people to do more cool and interesting things rather than having to kind of wrestle it and fight it. So actually, it's now, now is a really good time. Um, so, do you want to work in digital? Um, what do we, we're kind of asked to talk a little bit about what we look for when we're gonna hire people. Um, and this is two very quick slides and basically the punchline is this. What do we look for when we hire young people is exactly the same as what we look for when we're hiring any people. So we're looking for a good culture fit, we're looking for people that demonstrate that they might not have all the experience in the world but they demonstrate they actually care about what it is that they're here to talk about. They've done their homework, they're interested in pursuing the career, they take it seriously um, and most importantly they're willing to work really hard. I think one of the um, the things that I noticed having recently just um, hired our first apprentice who's starting on Monday, um, the, the numbers went like this. We had 40 people apply for an apprenticeship. Out of that, we invited 20 of the most promising candidates along to an open evening that we um, were going to host. Six people RSVP'd and four of them turned up and we hired one of them. So there's, what's that, 14 people who could have come along and had a really good one in 20 chance at getting a job and didn't for one reason or another. Now, maybe that's because they were bullied into applying by their parents because they don't want them sitting around the house all day using their internet and their showers, possibly. Um, some people maybe didn't have the confidence to come to an open evening event like that. It really wasn't scary. We literally played a few games and everyone had like a speed dating chat with one member of my team. It wasn't terrifying and I thought we made that pretty clear in the, in the invite that it wasn't gonna be scary. So um, there are good opportunities out there, but you will have to probably put in a bit of effort um, in order to do it. So that's basically what we're looking for people to demonstrate when they come for an interview or apply um, with Graphite. Uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing. We need, we're putting an effort to, to arrange things like that. And what we expect from you is to do the same thing, put some effort in as well, which I don't think is asking too much. Um, okay, so into the advice section. And I'll try and rattle through this as quick as we can uh, so we can get into the Q&A. Some of the stuff's the same as Richard said. I'm gonna rephrase it slightly so we sound different. Um, think of the person who's gonna read your CV. Please don't just uh, send exactly the same thing to everybody. You really need to tailor it. So look at the, look at the um, uh, job spec, 
look at that person on Twitter, if you can find a name for the person who's the hiring manager, actually try and personalize it for them. Not only will you have a better chance of actually getting through to the next stage, you're going to improve their day dramatically. Um, we get a lot of applications from people who um, have just kind of spam their CV to everybody. It's not helpful for you. It's not helpful for the person that's hiring. The chances are you're probably just going to end up getting put in the standby pile at best. Um, so yeah, try and put some effort into personalizing. I know it's hard um, if you're applying for a lot of roles, but maybe be a bit more selective. Apply for a few less roles, but care about it a bit more. And you'll probably get a lot, um, a lot more benefit from it. Um, make your communication relevant. And above all, sell yourself. This, I think, is good advice for any role and doesn't necessarily um, apply just to digital. Um, consider um, putting a few bullets at the top of your CV that are very specific for that role. Why you're applying for it is a good one to start with. What you think you can bring to it is also a good one to put in there. Richard's advice about don't open with, hi, I'm a graduate of, is also really good advice um, because chances are someone's going to skim past that. You're basically, in, on that first sort, when you get a big pile of CVs, you're looking for keywords and things that are relevant and interesting to you. Um, and so put all that at the top, just like you would if you were keyword optimizing a web page. It's exactly the same thing. Please do not use the one-click apply button on LinkedIn or Indeed or any other jobs like that. You are wasting your time. That is the quickest way to get completely ignored. Um, usually people will have special fields on their um, application forms um, where they're asking for additional information. If you use that, you don't fill any of those in. So you're automatically just going in at the bottom of the pile. So there's a hint from the inside. Don't do that. Um, seems obvious, but be contactable, be responsive, be available. <laughs> Um, we had an absolute nightmare. Our office manager uh, was herding cats trying to get people to come to that open evening. It was a disaster trying to get hold of people. And even afterwards, when I was trying to phone people and give them feedback, can't get through on the phone. Uh, and these people are all very young. They're between 18 and 21. Their mobile phones are surgically attached to their hands. If you see a phone number ringing you from a number that has the area code of somewhere where you've applied for a job, please pick it up. It seems very basic. <laughs> Um, but you would not believe how much time it took for us to um, to hire successfully hire an apprentice and actually give people feedback from it, which is something we try to do always, even if you're not successful. Um, we would like people to come and see us um, at the times and dates that are convenient to them and us. We're not draconian about it. We're not, you know, you have to come at this time. We're pretty flexible. We offer backup dates. Um, if you genuinely can't do it, that's fine. We'll try and make uh, other arrangements. But um, yeah, this is a really basic thing. Please answer your phone. Um, I'm considering doing the next round entirely on WhatsApp, but we'll see. We'll see what happens after that. Um, please, 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 please. Um, get some relevant experience. Now, this is not the easiest one. This is this is a kind of uh, high-level hack for you. Um, but if you, you haven't got a ton of experience, but you're applying for a role um, where people are asking for experience, or you think the experience would help you, um, please try and get some experience. Now, this is a difficult one because you need to find the right place to get that experience. We heard a story earlier on uh, about getting experience and that didn't necessarily go too well. Um, but there are ways of doing it that give you a bit of structure. So either going through people like Wired Sussex, going through one of the great training providers in Brighton that will help you get an apprenticeship, um, attending events like this. You've already done step one. It's very good. Um, but either be an intern or take on small projects, even if they're just for yourself. There's a fantastic case study of a guy who ended up getting a design job at Microsoft. He basically tore them apart on the internet, took apart all of their logos, all of their branding work that was absolute tat, remade all of it beautifully for them, and just put it out on his own um, social channels. And he ended up getting a job just off the back of doing that with Microsoft in-house, which, and he's gone on to do really, really well. Um, so yeah, try and be an intern, um, but here's the disclaimer. Don't be taken advantage of. They're particularly in some industries, fashion is terrible for this. Um, you can very easily get chewed up and spat out as people literally just looking for free labor. So try and uh, basically ask the company if they've done this before. Um, ask them what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be walking the MD's dog or photocopying things or making coffee? Probably not going to help you too much. Um, but if they've got a relevant small, uh, small short-term project that you can work on, it's probably worth taking the, the time to do that. Um, so yeah, and they should really pay you expenses and stuff as well, at least. Um, but yeah, we can uh, we can get into uh, another time. So yeah, work hard, but don't let anyone take the piss. Basically, is uh, is good advice. Um, read around the subject and have an opinion. 
Um, not having tons of experience is no excuse for not being plugged in to digital. There are so many really good resources out there that you can use to demonstrate your, your kind of views on digital, build an opinion, learn and understand what's going on in the industry. You don't need to wait until you've been hired to do that. Um, you can really read into things and learn about a lot of stuff just online. Some great websites out there, stuff like eConsultancy and many, many others. Um, so yeah, have opinions, um, read the stuff, listen to podcasts, follow people, uh, and build your own views on what is good, what is bad, what is ugly. Chances are you're gonna get thrown a question like that if you get through to a face-to-face -face interview anyway. What's your favorite website? What app do you use every day? What's the best digital experience you've had? Have an answer ready for all that stuff. So actually use and consume the stuff that's gonna be created in that industry and grow some opinions about it, basically. And be ready to talk about it, as is also important. Uh, and yeah, designers and developers, if you're going into this route, you really do need to have a portfolio. If you're applying for a design job and you do not have a portfolio, um, you are probably not gonna make the first cut of CVs. Um, and again, the CV, uh, your portfolio doesn't have to be incredible, but you do need to demonstrate that you put a reasonable amount of effort into it and give people the opportunity to see what's good about you. Um, it's really, really hard. Um, and unless your work from school is incredible, it's probably not gonna do the job. Um, you really should be doing some personal, uh, personal work, either small freelance jobs or um, work for yourself like the Microsoft example. Um, there's a guy online who I think is a fantastic role model for this, a young guy who's trying to get into um, design. He's called Mark Hyans. Um, he lives in Surrey and he's got his own little business called Blue Deer Design and he does two or three podcasts that he makes with designers all around the world. Um, he uh, has got his own merch store, he does posters, he's done a few Kickstarters. Um, if you want to get into design and you want some advice on how to work really bloody hard to, uh, to do it, he is a really, really cool uh, case study that you should check out. Uh, he doesn't know that I've plugged him here, but uh, you should check his work out. He's, uh, he's a very talented designer, but also he's um, really trying to make his, his kind of way in the world. Um, so yeah, all on his own. So he's, he's a good one to, uh, to check out. Uh, and then, yeah, one last thing before we stop. Uh, a question. Uh, do you like pizza? Because if you do, I'm just going to plug our event that we're doing tomorrow. Sorry, Wired Sussex people. Uh, if you want to come to our office and eat some pizza, uh, you can from 6 o'clock tomorrow. You can have a chat with me and our head of tech will be there and our uh, creative director will be there as well as many people from our team. So if you want to come and eat pizza, there will not be a cat there. There might be a dog, um, but there definitely won't be a cat. Um, please, uh, yeah, check out the... Uh, invite on Eventbrite and come along. So that's me. Cheers.